Hey everybody, Mark Davis in the aftermath of our Thursday, June 12th, 2014 program. There's been a lot of buzz about Eric Cantor's shocking Tuesday night loss. Let's talk about what we know, what we don't know, and what we might soon learn, okay? Uh, there have been a lot of observations, a lot of editorials written, a lot of commentary about why Eric Cantor lost. The questions arise. Uh, was it the immigration issue? Was it Tea Party um, fire in the belly? Was it that he had grown out of touch with his constituents? Was it what you might call the establishment or house leadership disease? The answer to that is yes, 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 and yes. It's a little bit of all of the above. It was the, uh, I guess what you might call the imperfect storm for him. Uh, I had heard of Dave Bratt only in, as far as I had checked into a little website called Green Papers, which gives you a state-by-state -state look at everybody's campaign spending. I looked at what Matt Bevin was spending against Mitch McConnell, which was part of why it seemed he could not win. I took a look at what the, the folks were spending against Lindsey Graham in South Carolina, which is why I thought he was unbeatable. And I took a look at Dave Bratt up against Eric Cantor and saw the, you know, hundred and some thousand dollars up against the five million that Cantor was spending. And I chalked that off as, oh, well, I guess this is a guy that we'll be living with for a while. And, and I didn't lament that so much. I've been around Eric Cantor for a few times over the years. He's come to North Texas and done some appearances here with some members of the North Texas congressional delegation. Uh, when my head hit the pillow at night, Eric Cantor didn't strike me as one of those uh, infernal rhinos that we've just got to get rid of. Uh, however, the people of Virginia's 7th District apparently felt differently. Uh, I don't think that it was out of distaste for Eric Cantor. I think that um, Dave Bratt came along with a type of message that fell into a superb moment of timing, especially with regard to the immigration issue. Because what's been in the news for these last couple of weeks, imagery of, of essentially refugee camps along our own border here in Texas, next door and you know down the road there in Arizona, and, um, and, and the borders are actually front of mind at a very bad time for people who seem to be on the amnesty train. And, and then, then you get to what does that mean anymore? You know what the definition of amnesty is? Amnesty is any immigration plan that is a little softer than what you like. Uh, no matter where you are, if somebody's a little bit to, to the left of you, let's say, bah, amnesty. I know that, that in my words have meaning uh, world, I, I tend to look at amnesty as something that involves a, a, an unsatisfying or inappropriate lack of consequences for those who have broken our laws. Okay, that, that works up to a point, but then you have to kind of get specific. What are we going to do uh, with the millions of, who are already here, many with their 4.0 magnificent salt of the earth, uh, red, white, and blue loving children? Uh, and as, as we look for those very, very tough solutions, uh, I think there's an order of things, and this is where Eric Cantor got into a lot of trouble, it's where Boehner gets in trouble, it's where all the, it's where Lindsey Graham gets in trouble. Uh, everyone wants to go right now, right now, right now on what to do with the millions who are already here without any kind of assurance on what's going on down there, as in the southern border, as in what's going on uh, in, in the U.S. border uh, with Mexico, uh, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, California. And as long as we don't solve the border problem, if we don't absolutely have a border that works, any of these continuing discussions uh, of, of paths to legality, uh, don't even talk to me about, about a path to citizenship just yet, first things first, but along the lines of first things first, we must absolutely correct our border problems and have a ton more border patrol, an actual wall, I'm, a fa I'm still a fan of the actual wall, don't tell me we can't do it, and don't tell me it wouldn't work, walls work whether they're walls that you don't like, like Berlin, walls that are supportable, like the one in Jerusalem. I like it, the Pope doesn't. We'll talk about that. But nonetheless, walls work. And once we have that, a border that actually works, I'll sit down with everybody and talk about guest worker or whatever, uh, whatever you want to do. But the Eric Cantors, the John Boehners, the Lindsey Grahams, the John McCains, they want to talk about paths to legalization right now today. Well, right now today, we have a, a border that doesn't work. And if we start to put out all that crazy talk, like little alarms will go off in every head in Mexico, Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala, ding, 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 hey, open season in America, and, and the border is still porous. Let's go. And that's exactly what you're seeing down there uh, in these, these crazy w uh, days and weeks uh, with people pouring across the border right now. So first things first. First things first, secure the border first, then let's talk uh, in detail about what to do with the millions who are here. That is the main issue that took Eric Cantor down. And uh, beyond that, though, uh, there is the, uh, the grassroots and Tea Party um, fervor 
that still uh, has a heart that beats loud and long, and I think you're going to continue to see vestiges of that moving forward. We'll talk about those another time. I've taken up enough of your time today. However, let me take up a lot more of your time uh, on The Mark Davis Show, 7 to 10 Central Time on 660 AM The Answer, 660 AM The com. On Fridays, we host Bill Bennett. Oh, I refer to myself in the editorial we. I'm sorry. I host Bill Bennett's Morning in America. I'm glad to do it. We appreciate we, those who are doing the show, uh, Chris and and Dave and Claude uh, in, in Washington while I sit here in Texas and do that show. We appreciate you on Bill Bennett's Morning in America, 5 to 8 Central on Fridays, and then 8 to 10, the Texas portion of that, and then weekend, baby. So if you're watching this before the weekend kicks in, have a fantastic weekend, and thanks for listening and watching here on 660amtheanswer.com.